Hi. This is example number seven of section 13.5. So we have a system. Uh, we have a 10 kilogram ball that has a velocity of three meter per second when it's at point A. This is point A. And actually, here, the angle of point A is 45 degrees. And when they say, they tell us that the velocity is three meters per second, we know always, always the velocity is tangential to the trajectory. So we know the direction of that velocity is three meters per second in this direction. And then, and uh, they tell us that the path is circular with a radius of two meters, and they tell us that it's vertical. What does it mean that it's vertical? That we have a gravity, the action of the gravity. Because we could have thought this is somebody with a cord in that ball, they have a circular motion in this direction or in this direction, right? So if it's in vertical direction, we have the gravity acting upon the ball, but if we have in you know, a horizontal plane, then the gravity will be perpendicular to that circular path. So it's very important to read carefully the problem because every word counts. So and they are saying find the tension of the core and the increase of speed of the ball. So we want to find the tension in this core right here, and we want to find also the acceleration of the ball, the increase of the speed of the ball. Solution. First of all, we have to decide which, which kind of coordinates we want to use. Uh, if you recall from the theory, we talk about rectangular components or tangent and normal components or cylindrical components. Well, this is a circular path. Every time we have a curve, we can use either tangential and normal components or we can use a cylindrical components. In this case, I'm going to choose to use tangential and normal components, where this is my tangential component and this is my normal component. So I have a coordinate system, which is orthogonal. That means that it's perpendicular. One goes in the tangential direction, and one goes normal. And the normal uh, direction always points towards the center of uh, that curve path. So that uh, radius of curvature of my path is 2 meters. OK, so now that we have uh, decided what system of coordinates, I'm going to do my free body diagram of my ball, and if I draw the ball right here, I will have forces act upon that uh, ball. I have the weight, and the weight, you know, that is mass times gravity, and they tell us the mass is 10 kilograms, and we know that the gravity is 9.81 in international units, right? And then we have a, our tension. I'm going to drive it in another color. So we have the tension of the core. We know that equations of motion are force equals mass acceleration, right? So we draw our free body diagram and our kinetic diagram that involves the kinetic forces. So I'm going to write the kinetic diagram. I have the same ball right here, and I have the same coordinate system, I have tangential right here, and I have normal, right? And what uh, accelerations are involved? We have to remember that any time we have a circular path, we have the acceleration have two components. The velocity has only one component, tangential to the path, but our acceleration has two components, one tangential to the path and one normal. So our acceleration is actually acceleration in tangent and normal acceleration. So I will draw my tangential mass times tangential acceleration and mass times normal acceleration. We have to remember that the normal acceleration is the velocity squared over the radius of curvature. The velocity is given 3 meters per second and the radius of curvature is also given to two meters. So we add all the terms in the normal component we know because we have 10, we have 3, and we have the radius of curvature 2. Okay, 
But in the case of the tangential acceleration, we actually know the mass, and we know that the tangential acceleration is the increase of the rate of change of the velocity. But we actually do not know how much is that increasing. So we, we put that as an unknown. This is 45, so this is also 45 degrees. So equations of motion, adding forces in drag, uh, add forces in my normal. So this is tangent minus wave cosine of 45 equals to my 10 times 3 squared over 2. In this equation, the only unknown that I have is the tension, so I can have that the tension is 10 times 9 over 2. Well, actually, I could solve for that already, but I'm just writing all the numbers. So, And this is the weight is 10 times 9.81 cosine of 45. You know that's square root of 2 over 2. And from here, the tension developed in the court. Yeah, I have the results right here. And it's uh, 114 newtons. Then we add forces uh, now in our tangent direction, right? And in, in our tangent direction, we have weight, which is 10 times 9.1 sine of 45. And we don't have any other force. So that's equals to my a. Uh, mass times the rate of change of velocity. And that, uh, from here, I can find the rate of change of velocity will be equal to 6.94 meters over second squared.